glad that you joined us tonight for Rain Online. And so listen, 
Make sure we have a very important date for you before we start, okay? Our last in-person rain service for 2023 is October the 11th. So write it down right now, put it in your phones, put it in your calendars. Listen, you need to be there and we'll all be there. And so you can join us all. It will be a great time. And so you look around, see, I'm not by myself tonight. So I'm so excited to have these beautiful women with me. Um, so we're going to just jump right in. You know, the Bible is filled with st uh, stories of people that encourage us, inspire us, challenge us, sometimes warn us. You know, how often I have read a story and said, well, I ain't going to do that. You know, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. And so our stories are meant to do the same thing. Okay. Our stories should uh, be there to inspire others and and you know, encourage them and challenge them and sometimes warn them, you know, same thing. You know, I was le leading a song a couple of weeks ago called The King of Kings and um, two phrases in it just screamed at me. It said, he is in Jesus did not despise the cross because he saw to the other side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, so often in our life, you know, our story when we're on the other side of a struggle or on the other side of heartache or on the other side of whatever, our story may be what someone else needs to be able to push through and not despise the walk that they're gonna have to walk. And so tonight, this is what we're here for. We wanna encourage you, we want to inspire you, we want to challenge you. Some of us may even uh, be here to warn you tonight, okay? But we really want to reveal God's handiwork and our stories. Yeah. Because if you look at, we'll all admit it's not about us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Our role in our story is important, but the major, the major role is what God has done in our life. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, I've looked at, I remember when I first accepted Christ and um, my pastor's wife, just beautiful, I mean, full of grace, kind, you know, all the things she, to me, I thought Delenn Rizzo is perfect, like perfect, you know, uh, I just thought, man, she can never make a mistake, you know, and I think a lot of times, most of us have been guilty to look at maybe leaders or pastors or, you know, older women or, you know, someone that serves, you know, teaching in children or on the altar and think, wow, you know, they have it all together. Like, they're like some superhero. Yeah. You know, superhero untouchable. And can I tell you, ain't none of us a superhero, no, <laughs> okay? The only superhero is Jesus. Yeah. None of us are exempt from hardship, yeah. okay? We've all walked through some pretty uh, crazy things, some pretty hard things, and we'll talk about that tonight. Um, but because of Jesus, we're able to get out of that. And so we just want to encourage you tonight with that. And so first, I just want to ask you guys, if you could tell your younger self anything, or, you know, you maybe wished someone would have told you when you were younger, or you wish you would have listened to yeah. what someone, come on, who would, my mama, she tried to tell me. My leaders tried to tell me, and I just had to, you know, go to the school of hard knocks, you know? Um, but what would you tell your younger self? You know, if you if you could go back and tell Kim something, young Kim, what would you tell young Kim? Well, young Kim, when I first started going to church, I was, you know, young in the Lord, mm -hmm. newly married, struggling uh, and dealing with lots of insecurity. And so um, I would tell myself that everyone else does not have it all together, yeah. Yeah. right? Because you look at others in the church, yeah. maybe, and you think, gosh, kind of like you said about Pastor Delenn, they have it all together. They have no issues. Their life is perfect. Their family's perfect. Their children's perfect. And it's a lie, yeah. right? Yeah. So now on this side of it, I would say, to young Kim, that they don't have it all together. Mm -hmm. They struggle just like you mm -hmm. do. And for me, unfortunately, at that time, I did allow it to kind of put, you know, hands linked to people and, and, and maybe not get in relationships that could have been beneficial for me at that time. And um, that could have been harmful for me in that time. But I'd also say delight in that. Delight mm -hmm. in as I was young in the Lord and searching didn't understand the scriptures and yeah. how it applied really to me. Yeah. 
Um, but I delight in that and, and really be intimate with the Lord yeah. in my moments of even in insecurity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Amen. That's what I was telling you. That's good. That's good. Really good. Mm -hmm. There's a um, line in a song that we listen to and it says there's purpose in the pain. Like that's what I would tell my younger self, like, cause I couldn't see it then, but now yeah. I know the purpose, you know? Yeah. That's good. So that's yeah. good. I know for me personally, I think I would go back and tell my younger self, um, that God is the only one that can fill the void in your life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because wow. I know so many times we look to everything else, um, men, yeah. drugs, yeah. you know, electronics, everything yeah. to fill yeah. that void that we fill. And God is the only one who can fill it. So yeah. that's something that I wish I'd have listened to. <laughs> <laughs> so did someone tell you that? Yes, my mom told me that all the time, <laughs> all the time. So you grew up in church. Yes. Tell us a little bit, like, what was your, your home life when you were younger? So um, grew up in church. When I was two years old, my dad went to prison, um, and he was in prison until about, until I turned 15. Um, and then my mom, she got remarried at uh, when I was four, and then... Oh. They got a divorce when I was in fifth grade. So kind of just a lot of unsteadiness wow. when it came to um, the father figure in the home. Yeah, mm -hmm. wow. And to look now, tell them, where are you going to school for? Would you I just... am in law school. <laughs> yep. She's in law school, y'all. <laughs> you know, your story just really, um, it's just beautiful mm -hmm. yeah. because you really, have the excuses that to not be where you are today yeah but by surrendering to jesus you know yeah. it's just beautiful yeah. it's beautiful amen. Amen. amen so anyone else have anything to tell their younger self I, i'll say this uh a lot of um older people would tell me you know that the days are long but the years are short mm -hmm. and in the moment, it's hard to believe that, you know, it's like, no, it's all long, like, it's all <laughs> long, all of it. Um, but now, like, looking back, and my husband and I were actually talking about just, you know, the, the years that we've been together and just kind of, like, reminiscing together, and I got, like, really emotional because I was like, man, like, it seems like so long ago, but when I was in the moment, it felt like it was the, you know, the rough stuff was never going to end. Yeah. It was just like ongoing and it was just a long process and now I look back and I'm like oh boo that it was it really it wasn't it, I know it was long then um but it just goes by so quickly and so um I wish I that she would have done a better job at just being more present even in the struggle yeah, and yeah. not just yeah. wanting to just get past it and like mm -hmm. and keep looking forward like yes we wow. look forward but still be very much present because there's so many things um that i feel like i missed out on or i, or I could have grown even yeah. more through that time it's beautiful yeah. the thing too as you walk through things you recognize the fruit. Mm -hmm. So each time as you grow yeah. and in your walk with the Lord and in your relationship and your marriage, you recognize the fruit of that and you grow and then you can share it and yeah. laugh about those things mm -hmm. now that we're not there in front of us. Do you have some of those things? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There are some things that have happened, and and we'll like we, in the family say, "Wait, can we laugh about that yet?" Like, no, not yet. <laughs> I'm like, it's not funny yet. <laughs> oh, anyone else have some words of wisdom, Candace? Do you have some words of wisdom to your younger self? Um, I would just say, be patient with myself, like it's through good. the yeah. through the trauma and through yeah. the things I walk through. Um, a lot of the times I turn my anger inward mm -hmm. and it wow. turned to like self hate. Mm -hmm. And I spent many, many years of thinking, man, this life is not worth it. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. if, if this is what life is, then I don't, I don't want to be here or just not believe in the lies, the lies yeah. that made me think that my family would be better off without me mm -hmm. or, yeah. you know, or wow. the lies that had been spoken to me, you yeah. know, as a young person. Wow. And so 
Do you mind kind of disclosing what a little bit of what you went through, like just so they kind of get a picture, you know? Um, a lot of trauma from mm -hmm. the age of three. Um, multiple people that were close to me in my life um, inflicted a lot of trauma mm -hmm. and um, abuse in, in different ways yeah. and um, sexual assaults and and um, just yeah yeah so how did that affect you trusting oh I trusted no one in fact yeah. I still to this day have to watch yeah. myself when when those thoughts come up I'm like nope I'm gonna be because ultimately what I had to do is give it to God and help mm -hmm. get him to help me trust yeah. him yeah. yeah you know I had to um really trust in the Lord and lean to him for what I yeah. needed um but I, I definitely put walls up a lot of yeah. my life yeah. which I regret but yeah, but look where you are today. Yeah, amen. <laughs> doing amen. so good today. Yeah. I'm amen. so proud of you. I'm Thank so you. proud of you. Thank you know the uh, two greatest commandments: love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second, love your neighbor as yourself. You know, I really feel most people quit because of the second commandment. Mm -hmm. You know, because <laughs> people yeah. can be, yeah. Yeah. you know, difficult. It can be difficult mm -hmm. sometimes. So. Um, anyone else want to add anything on that? What you tell your younger self, Sammy? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go back um, and hit where Sarah was. You know, when I was younger, seeing the beauty in yeah. all stages yeah. of life. Yeah. That there yeah. is beauty. Yeah. Yeah. And that you can have beauty even yeah. in pain. Yeah. yeah. You know, I've learned that. Yeah. As I have went through different things and God has revealed that. Yeah. And I think that is just strength within itself, you know? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Beautiful. Okay, so another question. How important has have women been in your life, whether younger or older, you know? Um, we always talk about connecting and getting in C groups or making sure that you're not isolated because we know that's where the enemy can really, yeah. you know, take us out. So how important have other women been in your life? I'd say for me, uh, it's been very important. I am naturally someone who doesn't like to share. Um, I tend to bottle it all in and I get so caught up in myself to where I get to this place where I'm like, oh my God, I'm such an awful person. Like, I can't believe I'm like thinking this. I can't believe I'm struggling with this. Like, oh my God, like, you know, and then all the times that I finally, it took a while, but I, so many times sitting on mom's bed, like she waiting there for like 10 minutes while I'm like trying to gain up the courage to tell her. And, uh, but every time I would tell mom or any other mentor, like it was just so like releasing just so much peace. Like, okay, I'm not a monster. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and just hearing someone else's story yeah. on the other side, just yeah. like, yeah. You, it really brings joy because yeah. I feel like whenever yeah. I don't go to other women in my life, then it really causes like a dark cloud to come over me. But whenever mm -hmm. I finally go and tell them like, there's joy, there's hope, you see hope yeah. on yeah. the other side because yeah. you see, okay, I'm not the only one who struggled with this. Someone yes. else has. And so I would yeah. say that's how they've been important to me in my life. Wow, that's good, that's good. I'll piggyback off of what, off of that. I felt, I feel like still to this day, older women give us perspective and younger women give us purpose. Mm -hmm. And so for me, yeah. like being in that between, because you know, like, like Sarai was saying, like you feel like you're just like, oh my God, I don't, or Miss Kim, like I don't have it all together and I need to have it all together. And then you go to someone older and they're like, Maybe you, we never going to have it all together. No, it's all together. But then in turn, but then in turn, like younger women, you know, they're in a different phase. Or even I think of like, you know, when I talk to one of my daughters and, you know, like their worst thing right now is, you know, they can't pick out what to wear, you know, on free dress day. And I'm like, baby, it's not that big of a deal. Like I know it is to you in this moment, but you know, later on down the road, like it's not going to matter. And so um, there's just such beauty in that, the full circle of somebody telling you it's going to be all right. And then explaining, Hey, I've been there, yes. you know, and this is what the Lord showed me through this. And then in turn, yes. instead of just taking in, taking in and ever being like, it's okay, it's okay. We in turn also letting other people know it's going to be okay. Yeah. It's yeah. going to yeah. be okay. Don't you yeah. think as you encourage 
your daughters or someone younger than you or even just someone younger than the Lord and you it gives you oh, renewed yes. yes to yeah. remind it's yourself. It's so much that, more filling. Yeah. 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 Definitely so um fun. as we remind ourselves and then share a testimony that's or that's something good. that God has done in a difficult time yeah. that it gives us a renewed hope for yeah. the next challenge yes. that comes Amen. Yeah. That's good. That's, that's good. That's really and I know for me, just talking about my own, you know, challenges with insecurities, especially with other women, feeling inferior, you know, not good enough. That was the very thing that brought the self confidence was mm -hmm. connecting with other women, you know, yeah. and in women's ministry, I was terrified, terrified <laughs> of that. And but uh, God, I can think of so many women that um, helped me see things in myself I did not, I did wow. not see. Yes. I would have never seen it. Uh, yeah. But I had to let my walls down, yeah. right? Push so past good. the fear, uh, you know, being, and give grace to people, like. Yeah. Yeah. Give grace to people and give grace yes. to yourself. Yes. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like That's sometimes good. we, because maybe we do hold people to a level that yeah. they didn't even ask to be right. on. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We just yeah. do it. Right. Yeah. And then, but having, just having grace with other yeah. women yeah. and having grace with yourself in the process, yeah. you know, of getting, of connecting with other women. But I will say for me, going to church was hundred percent absolutely necessary but it wasn't until I had more intimate relationships with other women mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. where I flourished, yeah. right? Yeah. Letting yeah. them speak life into me and guiding me in the word and watching them model yeah. their life before me, right? It's very yeah. important. Yeah. Do um, you think that, that, to me, I think it's such a choice because so many times, like, we don't want to yeah. go into relationships. We don't want to trust. Scary. Yeah. Like you said, yeah. with trusting mm -hmm. and everything, and it is such a choice to trust God again. Yeah. Yes. Even if there's been yeah. hurt, yeah. Or if there's yeah. been um, things that have happened to us to say, physically say, I'm going to trust God with my heart again. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and to take the steps to make yeah. that growth happen yeah. because it can't just happen by us wanting it yes. or, you know, it takes the work too. Yes. And then yeah. the women, you know, whenever we do make the choice, God will put somebody in our path that we can yeah. either help along or that will help us along. Yeah, yeah. That's, good. that's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. And I think about love, like you said, you know, the meaning of love, you know, in Corinthians, part of it is putting yourself in a position for injury. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, to, to truly love, you're opening yourself up to be injured. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's hard. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to choose. Yeah, and like you said, you you have to choose it, and no one can choose it for you. You know, um, but it's beautiful. I mean, it's it's beautiful. A life without it is is meaningless. So. Ooh, that's some good stuff. Anyone else have anything to add on that? I'm just so thankful that um, the the lady that has helped me through things. Um, was patient with me. Oh, and, and like you awesome. um, were saying, just having grace and stuff. Yeah. Because yeah. going to her time and time and time again with sometimes the same issue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It it could have it could have given her an opportunity to get aggravated or yeah. you know, just yeah. kind of avoid me. But she didn't. <laughs> Thank God. Awesome. She's resilient. <laughs> Thank God. Oh, that's awesome. And um, I love the fact that she always pointed me to the word. It wasn't yeah. her opinion. Yeah, yeah. Yes. that's so good. What she yeah. thought I needed to do. It was that's always, good. okay, let's see what the word says. Yeah, so that's good. good. And I love how you said, even sometimes it was the same thing. Because mm -hmm. look, mm -hmm. I've been around the same <laughs> hill. Yeah. What's that song? The mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. Oh, I don't know. I think it's some nursery rhyme song, but yeah, I've been around the same hill, having the same yeah. conversation, mm -hmm. and so it's so important to have people in your life that are going to be patient. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, okay, where do we? Okay, what did we talk about last time? Okay, it's okay. And to you be know, purposeful about praying yeah. about the right people to be in your life. Yeah, yes. yes. somebody that's okay. like you that maybe has gone through a similar situation or that can be patient um, or you can help each other, you know, sh iron, iron sharpens iron. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want everyone to be like you, but if it is someone like you, then you can, they can say, 
uh, these are the things that helped me yeah. and that, yeah. and that can yeah. relate to your personality. Yeah. Yeah. And then somebody that's very different than you can mm-hmm. give you a, a new perspective, right. yeah. Yeah. you know, and yeah. all, and God is so faithful to put those different people in your path yeah. and you have to be prayerful and use right. wisdom in those times right. to, to yeah. see the people that can really speak to you. Yeah. 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 Yes. I think it's, it's by hearing the Holy Spirit, right. you know, like yeah. you said, Definitely. praying and yielding to the Holy Spirit. And not just because everyone else is doing it, but yeah. because that's the that's the person that God right. has for you to grow in that thing or right. that season. Right. It reminds me of the Elijah Elisha concept. You know, I've kind of always, you know, in my life personally, I've seen it. God always places Elijah's mm-hmm. in my life yeah. and Elisha's, yeah. you know, and specifically, yeah. you know, wow. and you have to be okay yes. with who he yeah. places yeah. in your life, yeah. you know? Because yeah. a lot of times like, no, I want to be with that person. <laughs> I'll be there. And the Lord's like, I'm trying to give you everything you need right yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so good. So good. And so the last question I want to hit on, it's kind of a heavy, uh, heavy hitter. Like we have a lot of experiences around this table. And so I really would like for everyone to I'm just speak into this. And the question is, how did you make it? How did you make it to where you are today? Now, we all admit we haven't arrived. And so when I say make it, make it to today. <laughs> make it to where you are today, the victory that you're in, because until we take our last breath, do you hear me? Until we take our last breath, okay, we have to keep moving forward, keep pressing forward. And so... I want to first ask, you know, Miss Belinda, you, you know, your experience, you've shared it openly. Um, you were um, abused, sexually abused by an elder in the church. How did you not blame God in that? Or how, you know, how, how, how did you get where you are today? Well, I think because I was in church and I was hearing the truth of what God's wow. word said. So love the sinner, but hate the sin. Yeah. Wow. You know, um, if I didn't forgive, I wouldn't be forgiven. Wow. Wow. You know, just wow. all of the things I was, I was hearing the truth and I knew that at the end of the day, I wanted the Lord to say, well done, that good and faithful servant. And I couldn't say, well, you don't know what this person did to me. It didn't matter. It was how did I respond to it and what did I do with it, you know? And yeah. um, so, and then um, just walking that out, you know? And it's like the Lord, I mean, Jesus forgives us. Like if we go to him and we confess and we repent, he forgives us. So the next time we do that, it's like it's the first time. And so that's what I had to do. Like through the, it started as sexual abuse and went to rape. Like for 15 years, I dealt with that. And so you just had to forgive. And then it was like every time was the first time. And I just had to keep doing that all the while praying that the Lord would intercede and stop it, you know. And then as I grew and I got stronger in my walk in the Lord and I started reading where it said, you be bold and courageous. I finally got up the courage, you know, because I didn't tell anyone. I just and dealt with it, you know, it was just me and God. So my relationship with him became so much stronger because he was all I had, yeah. you know, and I've learned wow. that he's all I need. So um, wow. just to walk through that, I mean, wow. wow. and there's purpose in the pain, you know, like I know if I wouldn't have went through that, like all the things I've faced since then, there's no way I could have walked through all those things had I not made it through wow. that, you know. Wow. So, That's beautiful. Oh, y'all, gosh. <sighs> what the Lord can do. Yeah. You know, I just, your story has inspired me so much and even corrected me at some times. <laughs> well, I mean, he said, you know, content in all things. And then, like, yeah. I just finished reading Job, it says, do we take the good things, but we don't take the bad things? Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. and we don't know God has a plan. Like, if we truly believe, you know, he yeah. has a plan for us. Then I don't know why he chose me, you know, or yeah. why I had to walk that out. But, um, and then wow. what do you do with it? You know, so like I share, you know, like, yeah. like there's joy. You know I mean, there's, you know, there's the joy of the Lord is my strength. Like he's all I have. He's all I need. And wow. yeah. I just, 
We have a good relationship. <laughs> He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. He'll never fail me. Like, you put your hope in people, and um, you got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Yeah. Amen. That's good. That is good. So, yeah, Candace, how did you make it? Um, I, I would have a similar response. Uh, definitely God. Absolutely God. Um, and just allowing myself to trust him and to believe what he said about me and, and his word, his promises to me and really just having the will to, to want change, to want, um, to grow and just being hungry for it because I struggled a lot because of the, the circumstances I began to stuff everything down and I never really dealt with it. Yeah. yeah, I can't. Yeah. And so it led into depression, anxiety, yeah. um, eating disorders, mm -hmm. um, just different, different things that I used to cope. And, yeah. um, what I realized was that none of this is, is fulfilling me. None of this yeah. is, is, is doing it like it's only going to be God and you you have to have it it is the Lord first and foremost but as women we have to have the will and yeah. the courage mm -hmm. yeah. to fight yes, yes. like yeah. really yeah. really 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 yeah. fight so for yeah. your life because yeah. the enemy wants us you know yeah. for yeah. those things to have happened to each and every yeah. one of us the enemy had a plan to destroy us yes. but God Yes. You know, Amen. And, Amen. and and just forgiveness, yeah. forgiveness, letting those things go, regardless of, you know, how bad I thought it was or um, it never justifies the behavior. You're not it's you're good. not saying yeah. Yeah. that this was OK, that this yeah. happened yeah. to me. Exactly. But Amen. what it's saying is God gave me a second chance. So why? Can I not extend that same grace and forgiveness to others? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And as Sarah, how'd you make it? Um, Why don't you tell a little bit, oh. you know, yeah. some of the things that you mm -hmm. struggled with? Sorry, but not sorry. <laughs> um, I will say, uh, Miss Belinda's story has um, been like that push on some days where it just felt like, you know, just things aren't fair or like, why, why is this such a struggle? And then I'll walk across campus and I'll see Miss Belinda and she's always smiling no matter what she's doing. And I'm like, okay, if Miss Belinda can be here and love Jesus and, sh and be Jesus to everyone she comes in contact with, how much more so again, like Candace was saying, not minimizing my pain, but also yeah. like there's, yeah. I'm surrounded by women who have just gone through so much, like yeah. just, just the three sitting right here, you yeah. know, and yeah. hearing their stories. And I think that also builds on the importance of surrounding yourself by women who've gone before you and, um, and hearing their stories. Like yeah. it's just as important for you to share, but it's it's even more important to hear what other people have gone through because it just encourages you. Yeah. Um, and so for me, uh, you know, obviously like raised in a godly home, raised in church, and you know, uh, had a relationship with the Lord, and um, just walked through some things. And um, I don't know, just life just kind of I felt like it hit me out of nowhere. Um, and walked through some unforeseen circumstances and uh, some people just used their words to cut me down at a very vulnerable time in my life. Um, and then uh, I have three beautiful girls and two of them have had very severe eczema. And um, for somebody that all of my teenagers, I was never getting married and I was never having kids. And then all of a sudden, you know, I met my husband and it was like, I was head over heels and I was like, I will do this forever and I will gladly have all of your kids. Um, and, and, then, and then life hits the ceiling fan, you know, and uh, I didn't see it until on the other side of it. <laughs> but, um, 
uh, I fell into a really deep depression and I didn't recognize it. Um, I was just coping and trying, trying to survive. Uh, I was very numb and was trying to numb the pain and the pain that I didn't recognize um, for a very long time with a lot of things, um, you know, um, food, um, technology, everything, you know, Elena, you were saying, um, at some point in my life with pornography. And I just, I just didn't want to feel, it was like, I went from one extreme of not wanting to feel to the other extreme of needing to feel something because other than pain. And, um, I remember I was just trying so hard, like, Jesus, this is not where I want to be. This is not where I want to be with my life. This is not where I want to be with my life. I know that you have so much more. Like, these babies need a need a mother, like, that's fully present. And um, and I would cry out, and I, you know, and I'm like, Lord, this is not who I want. This is not who I want to be. And um, I went to a conference, and Christine Kane was preaching, and she preached on the man by the pool of Bethesda. And this will follow me for the rest of my life. And she said, here he was 38 years and the Messiah came face to face and asked him, do you want to be made whole? And his response was, well, I don't have anyone to get me in the water and like, I can't get in there myself. And like, I'm just, and, and Jesus stopped and said, do you want to be made whole? Yeah. And she, she was like, Jesus is here tonight. He's asking, do you want to be made whole? Or do you want to continue to be the victim and love your comfortable mat? And I, it was like the Holy Spirit was like, grabbed me by the shirt collar and was like, are you listening? And I remember after that, cause it's so easy. And you know, um, the enemy wants to keep you comfortable and tell you the person that did this is a monster. Like they're a monster. And yeah. poor baby, I'm so sorry this happened to you. It's not your fault. And no, it's not my fault, but I had to come to the realization that God loves these other people just as much yeah. as he loves me. Yeah. The cross was for them just as much as it was for yeah. me. And it doesn't matter what they do or who says what or who did this to me and how this plays That's out. Good. But that like we're on equal, my sin is just as bad as their yeah. sins. Yeah. And you know, just like, um, Candace and Belinda were saying, like, when I get to heaven, he's not going to ask me, oh, who did that to you, babe? I'm mm -hmm. sorry. I'm sorry. He's asked me, what did you do with your life? Yeah. And um, so that was a, a wake up call for me because I didn't realize how deep in victimhood I was sitting. I wasn't yeah. putting people wow. on blast. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't playing all those things out. But I was bound yeah. by this, like, I, I didn't have the courage to, like, see the lie for what it was. Yeah. And um, it was in that moment I started, even though I still was struggling with the depression and anxiety, I started to, um, and I was, you know, still in the Word, still in worship, still going to church, still being around people. Um, but I started to apply, like, easy physical things. I made a checklist, like, have you been outside for at least five to 10 minutes in the sunlight? You know, have you, um, have you drank enough water today? Like I did a couple yeah. simple things every day to make sure that I'm like, are you making physical effort towards your healing? And, um, and I had a divine encounter with the Lord. And this was after like working towards this, like continuing to try and apply myself and had a divine encounter with the Lord. And over a span of a few days or a week, I mean, he touched every single part of my heart. And I began to see everything for what it was that for so long I was just bound by. And I mean, every lie, it was like he ripped the bandaid off. And it was, I mean, you can ask my husband, I was just in tears all week, but it was the most beautiful, experience and I can't ever go back and I never want to go back. Um, and it's, it's so different living on this side of this. Now I remember someone asked me cause like right after I was freed from all of it, someone asked me cause I'd started working out. I have this bad habit. I'll do really good for about three weeks and then I fall. <laughs> and so someone asked me, they were like, so like, you know, you've been working out. Like, do you feel like, can you, like you feel yourself feeling better. And I said, honestly, I said, 
I don't know if it's working out or Jesus or both. I said, but the fact that I'm actually okay to be outside with my kids in the middle of the afternoon, like that's Jesus. I'm sorry. There's no amount of working out that made me feel like that. Um, but yeah, so that's, um, it's Jesus. And on the days when you feel like you can't make it, I think about the woman with the issue of blood, um, that she pushed through the crowd just to grab the hem of his garment. Um, and I remember one night I was talking to my dad about something and I was like, why is it such a struggle? Like I'm here and I'm applying myself. Like, why is it? And he reminded me of the scripture that Paul says, I have fought a good fight. Yeah. And, um, and that's been yeah. such an encouragement that it's so easy to be like, we want Jesus to be door dash and just be like, Hey, I want my healing. Can you drop it off? You know, this afternoon. And no, like we've got to fight to get to the hem of the garment, you know, oh, he, wow. and the, the lyrics to that song that he saw to the other side. And if he could yeah. endure the cross, yeah. how much more can I push through and fight um, to get good. to him? Amen. And yeah, he's everything. Nothing Amen. else is can fill the yeah. void. Yeah, and so um, it's not easy being in darkness or you feel like you're hopeless, but when you're clinging to Jesus, that's yeah. what, I mean, it's just like, okay, I don't feel like I can do this, but I know he can yeah, and yeah, it's going to be so okay. Good. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Yo, other girls, how'd y'all make it? Anybody want to jump in here? I can jump in. I know <clears throat> for me, especially it was growing up, growing up was tough because didn't really have the father figure in the home, like constantly in the home. Um, and so over the years, along with all the rebellion and everything else, um, I started to look at God uh, the same way that I viewed my earthly father. Mm -hmm. And that really, I guess, gave me a real messed up view of kind of like what God was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't until I realized that that's how I was viewing him that I was yeah. truly able to be free that yeah. um, our yeah. Heavenly Father is so much yeah. more to us than Amen. any person yeah. on this earth and that um, he'll provide everything that we need yeah. and Amen. he's really all that we need. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's how I made it. <laughs> Come into that realization that literally God is all we need. Yeah, yeah. that's Amen. right. That's good. That's good. Anyone else? How'd y'all make it? Yeah, I'll go. Uh, <laughs> I'll say this. I've, um, and I probably won't get through it without crying, but I've it's been okay. through a lot of struggles. Financial, uh, just betrayal, a lot of different things. And uh, one thing that happened in my life that I can honestly say, if it wouldn't have been for Jesus and clinging to him, is when some of my loved ones got in serious trouble. And we didn't know what the outcome would be. Yeah. But as a just when I got the news, I just hurt so bad. I felt like everything was ripped out of me. And at that moment, I knew that nothing else could help me except yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And I clung to him just like he said. I clung to him, and I was anchored. I said, God, yes. everything I know about you has to, like, I need you now. I need you to strengthen me. Everything I could think of that I knew about him, I believed it. And I said, yeah. God, I need it. I need it right now. I feel like just the breath just was taken out of me. Yeah. But I've learned that through walking and continuing to hang on because it wasn't letting go. I knew yeah. that nothing could heal me and I mm -hmm. couldn't change. And the, the thing is, what I love about the Lord is even though the circumstances don't change, the inner man yeah. changes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I knew that. And every time that I would just grab tighter onto him and just um just speaking the truth over my life and yeah. actually claiming it for me. You know, God, you are my strength. I need strength. I need strength to put one foot in front of the other. Yeah. You know, I found that it was layers of strength. You know, in the yeah. series of layers, but y'all, that is what kept me going. It was the layers of strength as I kept going to the Father. You know, and I love this. I had many women in my corner and they were great. I, I think of Moses, how, you know, he had an Aaron and a Herod holding his arms up. 
and that was great. It was beautiful expressions of, you know, Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But my inside knew there was only one that can heal. Yeah. 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 And that's what my heart was just constantly drawn to. And, and it was an action plan of my mind being set yeah. as well, you know, yeah. on being anchored to truth. Yeah. No matter what comes my way, no matter what news I hear tomorrow, no matter what phone call I yeah. get, you yeah. know, this is the answer. And it was Jesus. Yeah. And it was yeah. Jesus many times a day, yeah. you know, yeah. until, like I said, layer upon layer, you get stronger. Yeah. And I love, we were talking the other day and you said, um, you used the word simple. Yeah. It's how simple it's, it's, it's Jesus. yeah, how yeah. sometimes we're looking for something a little more complicated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you give, like, you know, all of us probably have, you know, reached out to women, ministered to women and said, it's the simple. Yeah. And they're like, calling somebody else, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it really... You know, it is that simple. I think of the scripture in Revelations where it says we overcome by the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. And I was in a very dark time. And I clung, like, that was the scripture. The Holy Spirit gave me the morning. My mentor, one of my mentors reached out to me that day. She said, I got a word for you. Same scripture. You know, and that's where the Lord was telling me just... You don't need to, you need, you need to silence, yeah. silence the enemy, yeah. silence the lies, yes. just stick to my word. What have I done in your life? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. What have I done? Yeah. You know, and I start, well, gosh, you did this, Lord. You did that, Lord. You did that. And that's what, man, just yeah. brought me out of that, you know. Um, but it's the simplicity. I would say this too, it teaches us to trust when it is something that is precious to us, mm -hmm. it teaches us to lay it down. Yes. Yeah. There ain't yeah. nothing else you want to hang on to. You want to yeah. lay it all before the Father. Yeah. Yeah. Surrender yeah. was another thing mm -hmm. of just trusting the Lord, that God, I know you have this. I don't know what it will bring. I don't know what's going to come out. But the one thing I can hang on to is I know you have this. Yes. And I can yeah. trust. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, anyone else? Anyone else? I can say for me, it goes on back to what you just said. And, and uh, even when I was young in the Lord, because I didn't grow up in a Christian home. I got saved when I was around 19. But before that, all the struggles that I went through, the Lord gave me, I would think, like action items. Like you said, like you had these things. Even before I knew the word and before I had Christians in my life, uh, he would give me like one, two, three, like, uh -huh. do this like you said just let me do this just let me do this and then the more I learned the word it would be obedience is better than sacrifice yeah. mm -hmm. because a lot of times the things that he's asking you to do people don't understand or agree with or want to go along and do with you and a lot of times it comes down to that lord i just want my heart to be right yeah, yeah. yeah. obedience is better than coming back mm -hmm. around the mountain uh, again yeah. and saying yeah. what can i sacrifice like yeah, yeah. And, and he taught me a long time ago that in that obedience uh when we're not obedient we give up his best mm -hmm. the best the easiest way and we take the harder route and if we're just obedient, he's like, I have this blessed assurance that it's going to work out. And yeah. he'll work it out yeah. if you go 10 more times. But his way is the best way. And yeah. if we would yeah. just trust him. And even over the years where the things were enormous in my life or smaller things that seemed to overwhelm, it was reminding myself, God is bigger. God, yes. I've seen him yes. do this yes. and this. This is like after, you know, after you come out of the fog of thinking, yes. oh, this is the end of the world. You, know? <laughs> yeah. you come out of it and you go, gosh, he's done so much yes. more than this. Yes. What am I even yeah. thinking? Mm -hmm. And then it comes back to, Lord, help me get my heart right. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And, and just knowing the word and being in the word for myself Mm -hmm. for myself yes. and knowing what God uh, what his character is and yeah. how faithful he is and that yeah. he's going to work it out every time for my best yeah. even yeah. if it's hard yes. even yeah. if it's yes. not what I would choose amen. he's going to work it out the best yeah. way amen. for me yeah amen so. I know the uh, Romans eight twenty eight 
you know, mm -hmm. God works together all the things mm -hmm. for the good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For, for those that love the Lord. Yeah. I've quoted that really bad. <laughs> but anyway, you know, go read it. Romans 8, 28. Okay. So he takes all those things and, um, but that word good means benefit. And so, you know, I always look at it as broccoli instead of brownies. <laughs> you know, good is brownies. They smell good when they're cooking. Broccoli even stinks when it's cooking. <laughs> and so sometimes the process yeah. stinks. Yeah. And sometimes the things that God is asking us to surrender or do yeah, yeah. stinks. Yeah. But the outcome yeah, yeah, yeah. is health. So Amen. Yeah. And so he sees, and, and I think... You know, and this is recently, like I've been serving the Lord 30 years, but recently I finally just decided, you know, I'm not going to try to paint what the outcome should look like. I'm not going to try to paint what the good should look like because I understand that his good is better than anything I can even dream of, you know, so, so good. And I've just been challenged to really just get in the Lord's presence more because it's so, so easy, especially like being married, having a kid, it's so easy just to get distracted and wrapped yeah. up with everything in life, especially yeah. like screens, like yeah. seriously. <laughs> it looks bad because I have my phone out. <laughs> 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 um, like there's always yeah. a distraction. Yeah. And I wish yeah. that like, I I've shared this with some younger people just to be so careful because the enemy is doing everything he can yeah. to distract us oh, from yes. the Lord's yes. presence. Yeah. And I think that a lot of times I could have got over things a lot quicker if I would have mm -hmm. just gotten in the Lord's presence a mm -hmm. lot more. Yeah. There have been so many times to where the Lord has done things in me and I'm like, oh my God, what would happen if I wouldn't? Like, thank God I opened my Bible today, you know? <laughs> and I know there have been times where I didn't and it was a train wreck. And so really, I'm still working on this and I'm trying to get better, but really so, like dig into the Lord. Like yeah, instead yeah. of picking up your phone at night, like why don't, before you do that, or before you turn on the show, just start reading the Bible yeah. or maybe worship a little bit, like just yeah. doing extra and you'll be so surprised yeah. how much value it adds to your life. Amen. 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 And I think it's key that understanding that the word of God is the living yeah. word of God. Yes, it is. It's not a novel. Yes. It's not yeah. something that we just are looking for knowledge yeah. from, but it's life changing. Yeah. You know, and when we get that revelation, that's when, you know, we'll be at that place like, oh, my God, let me let me yeah. uh, feed to that. Yes. All right. So we'll wrap up. Anyone else have anything else they want to interject on that? Mm -hmm. Have y'all enjoyed this? Yes. Have y'all enjoyed this? Yes. Who was nervous at this table? Who wants to admit? <laughs> we were nervous. <laughs> like we were looking for deodorant and everything, you know? <laughs> but anyway, honestly, so I want to end with this. We have a, a beautiful time of uh, worship that you don't want to miss right after this. But I want to end with this scripture in 2 Corinthians 1, verse 3 through 4. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comforts. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've all touched tonight on where we've gotten our comfort from. He's the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction. Mm -hmm. So that, okay, so there's a reason that he does this. So not only he has all the comfort, okay, and it's all available, it's available to each one of us for everything we go through, but it's so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are confident by God. And so we can all testify that the things that the enemy tried to use to destroy us because we surrendered them to him. Yeah. Now, there have been some things that I did not surrender well, like Tina. Mm -hmm. Tina was saying, don't want to go around the mountain. I went around the mountain a lot. You know, the Lord's like, well, God, when are you going to get it? <laughs> um, I know, I'm like, sorry, Lord. Um, but when we surrender those things to him and we receive that comfort, you know, then we're able to bring it to others and comfort yeah. others and say, hey, it's not really... Um, what I did yeah, necessarily, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. we've all yeah. done certain things in our walk to right. get certain places because the Holy Spirit instructed us, right. you know, like yeah, you're saying, Tina, one, two, three, you know. Yeah. Um, 
But at the end of the day, the most powerful thing is the handiwork and the comfort that he's given to us. And so anyway, um, he wants to bring us out. So he wants to bring you out of whatever you are in tonight, whether it's anxiety, depression, you know, financial issues, addiction, you know, maybe you're in, you know, an adulterous situation, whatever it may be, an abusive situation. God wants to bring you out of that so then he can comfort you. And then one day, one day, you're going to be able to use that as ammunition against the enemy for the Lord's glory. Because listen, God's hand is all in your story, just like he's in all of our stories yeah. has been and will be to the end of days. God's hand is in your story. And so I want you to sit back and we're going to um, have this beautiful worship song. Miss Sarah Brock will lead us in. And I just really want you to take the time and just soak it in. Meditate, meditate in it and um, just be blessed by it.
His goodness and His mercy They found me They saved me And healed me Yes, I've got a story story to tell you, and it's all about Jesus, it's all about my Jesus. Cause he's been that good, he's been that good, he's still that good. Still that good Thank you Jesus And oh My God did not fail And oh That's the story Wasn't that so beautiful, so beautiful. Listen, thank you so much for joining us tonight, all of us tonight. It's been just a great night. I don't know about you, but I'm leaving encouraged and inspired and challenged too. Challenged to just be better, to be more like Jesus, amen? So listen, hopefully we will see you in person in October, on October the 11th for our live RAIN service. You can get all the details on social media platforms, RAIN Women, and check it out. Make sure you come, it will be amazing. Love you so much.